So well, first of all, hi guys, and thank you so much for taking the time to sit down um, to talk about your new album. How are you guys doing today? Well, uh, like really pleasantly good. Like um, woke up early and I'm kind of getting excited for that release that is coming like really soon. It's it's kind of weird that it's actually coming kind of like out of out from nowhere because like last like you know we we've, we've been talking together together about this whole situation like uh, going towards a release feels really like surreal because of all this like corona shit you know yeah. so it's like so it's like it's kind of coming out from out from nowhere right now so and but like well, as we're getting closer it's kind of getting also exciting because it's actually like uh we are like as a band we're like super proud of this album so it's like really it's gonna be like really we're like really hyped about releasing it so it's like <laughs> it feels good after all even though it's it's a weird time to release anything new related yeah. to music and i would say we are doing like pretty well uh considering the situation in the world right now but like uh without the shows live shows uh it's been such a difficult year and of course releasing the album uh, personally, for me, uh, my musical career is based on performing live and I think like all the other guys from our band are thinking the same. So like it's been a hard one and it's still going that we're not going to play uh, a really show. So tough times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely actually agree on that because it's like, yeah. Uh, it's kind of for me. It's the same. This year has kind of made me realize that that uh, playing in a band is what this fucking music thing is really about. It's it's like playing guitar along at home uh, and even writing songs. It it feels kind of pointless when you're not able to perform them with the band or record them with the band. It's like it's this is about playing in a band and that's 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 what's the fun where the fun part is in performing and so. That's because this is like really rough and really like strange all the time. But yeah, go on, please. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna ask because I I guess that most of you are actually working in music industry. So how has this whole situation been for you guys? Yeah, well, like you mentioned, we are we are all like professional musicians outside of Arion as well, and it's kind of. <sighs> We we have all, all of us. We have like managed to survive by by like adapting a little bit. Uh, personally, I have have uh, haven't had that like uh, urge to adapt that much because I teach guitar and I can do it via Zoom. You know, so it's kind of it's it's been kind of working and and I get these like songwriting royalties, which also help and and so so I've had, I had no problem being a musician during this time, but. For example, when when it comes to like R2, who's like uh, our keyboard keyboard player, who's like uh, uh, whose living is based on like playing shows like with uh, with others than Arion as well. So it's like it's like really di be like really difficult for him, for him. I can imagine at least and and well, but he's been able to adapt as well. So we've been doing okay, and maybe Lassen can take on from over here. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh... Like the money isn't just a thing over here. I mean, like uh, the mental part of this. It's I think it's more like it's harder. Like uh, there's days when I'm dreaming of being on stage, and like uh, we're getting messages from our agents that uh, you're gonna play this festival or this tour might happen. The next day we get the message all canceled, and that's like fuck. <laughs> like the surprise from that it's been so hard i thought i'm a really positive guy like in every situation but this year has uh oh my god i've been so negative some days that uh yeah same thing here it's it's really the the mental side that is difficult about this corona thing uh, we, we all have been like able to arrange our finances the way that yeah. we can function but but, but but the mental side is really difficult and actually I, I really miss like like just playing together even if it was just 
not for an audience, you know, if like like rehearse rehearsing and shit like that. But even that is like really hard to arrange right now, and there it kind of feels pointless as well. So it's like yeah, that, yeah, that's really true. Weird. Actually, I even didn't think about that side. Yeah. Have yeah. you actually played these songs um, as a band already together, or is that still something that hasn't happened at all? <laughs> It has not happened. The yeah. only guys who have played these songs together are me and Topias. Yeah. That's it, because because the the way we go into an album recording is that the very final stage of that is that we are going to rehearsal room, just me and Topias, and playing together those songs, trying to come up with like uh, additional like band hooks and stuff like that, and additional ideas, and just to make sure that the songs make sense when performed, like on a band, and guitar guitar drums is enough for that. So. Uh, that's that's kind of that, that's kind of the whole like the only experience of performing that album is is between me and Tobias and that that must be like really really weird for everyone else in our band. It's weird for us even so it's like yeah. I've sense. been uh, rehearsing these songs uh, in my own like working place in Tampere and there's just a mirror and me. And it's getting really boring, <laughs> like staring at yourself over there. Of course, I like that too, but yeah, well, you know. Yeah, well, let's discuss some more positive things, I guess, because you know about this Corona talk. Um, let's maybe start with discussing the songwriting process, because between the first album and the second, there was, of course, a lot of time. As you mentioned the last time, life came in the way. Um, this album, two years after the second one. Uh, when did you start writing this album? Well, like initially it started uh, even before our Battle Beast tour, which happened in spring 2019. So uh, that's when I began writing like the first songs. I began writing Bloodline at that point actually. And uh, then I got stuck for like a really long time because lots of stuff happened stuff happened and we had lots of shows so it was we, we were kind of like enjoying that and it felt like uh, there was no like not enough time for like writing and to, to like get, get those songs finished i i like uh, wrote down ideas and worked on demos and shit like that but for example i couldn't feel like finish lyrics during that time so and uh during like uh october which was like a really dark month for me personally and for the band as well, actually. We're not going to talk about that, but it was. And after that, it, it kind of sparkled to me that I, I kind of, kind of you, you know, came up with like some kind of like huge inspiration and started writing, writing lots of stuff. And, and meanwhile, to Tobias had also written like a few instrumental demos, demos like two or something like that. Which I at the time didn't consider like like uh, maybe maybe suitable for the album, but then the progress went further, and I started like really getting songs together during like uh, between uh, December and February, and between January and February, I basically wrote the whole album, like to put it one way. First, we finished like Bloodline in I believe it was like. Uh, December, you remember last year we were going yeah. that demo in December, and uh, after that the the whole like uh, flow just opened and and I got everything out, everything poured into the songs, and somehow like at the start of February we had an album together. It was like really weird. It was just just about like recording demo vocals for the last songs, just to make make the demos complete, and uh, for uh, for example, Matthias, our producer, to understand them and. That's how the album came together, like really, really, really fast. Like after, after uh, like half a year of like a really difficult time writing. So, so like for me, it, it was it was kind of an accomplishment, like in in like per, from like personal perspective, you know, because because of that uh, pace of the process and and the other guys kind of figure <laughs> again saw that from like out from the outside. I, I don't know. Last time I actually uh, wanna tell about his feelings when it when it come when it came to like that pace, but but yeah, it was it was I was actually going like uh, so fast with the lyrics that it was actually even difficult for us to find time for recording those demo vocals because we still had lots of lots of like shows and and so 
But yeah, let's please go on and tell tell your experiences relating to that. Well, actually, I can't even remember what was the question, but uh, about the demo vocal sessions that we had, uh, it was like, I, I think like we did all the songs in one month or even three weeks or something like that. And like in every session, it was amazing how like, I don't know how great songs this guy had made once again. And you were talking about the dark period, like was it uh, six months or something like that? Uh, I think we didn't even talk about it, but when I was uh, singing those demos and saw the lyrics and that stuff, it like, uh, I knew almost what was probably happened. So I don't know, it was nice to, uh, see that Evo had gone through those dark times and we had a masterpiece in our hands. I remember from our previous interview that um, you mentioned that um, since it was the first album with Lassie as a singer, that you were kind of learning also how to write songs for his voice and all. And I was wondering now that you have had this experience with Life is Not Beautiful, if that was kind of the starting point for Ultra's dialogue, knowing what works for Lassie's voice, and if that kind of inspired the songwriting as well. Yeah, well, uh, it was kind of kind of easy for starters when it came came to like the first album with Lassie. Uh, like the initial start felt like really really easy. Actually, we we managed to complete the first three songs, which were the first three singles as well, like At the Break of Dawn, Unforgivable, and No One Stands in My Way, which were actually really easy to write and. Uh, it felt like uh, all of us, we, we kind of felt like, okay, this is like gonna get really easy. But after a while, it kind of start, started getting like really hard to come up with like any new songs because everything felt like really generic. And at that point, uh, it kind of, um, the whole creating process kind of went down because also because of personal reasons and uh, and, and after that, it kind of felt like it's time for experimenting. And that's why Life is Not Beautiful kind of came came together as a, like a really experimental album. Like like experimenting a lot with Lassie's voice, which is like really versatile. And on this album, uh, I felt like, for example, like way more confident about like utilizing that, that versatility because, because uh, for example, I love to be your enemy. It's it's my favorite example of this. Uh, it was a really hard song to for me to come up with vocals. Uh, the story of that song is uh, that Tobias first wrote the instrumental for that track, and and he asked me that if if it's like if it's like this is like too heavy for Arian or too dark or something like that, and I was like, okay, it's it's heavy and it's it's actually good. It, I don't mind that, but. The, maybe maybe the main problem is that that it's like really really progressive and it's like really hard to come up with any like uh, vocals that make sense for Arian for the verse parts and uh, we kind of forgot about that song but at the very late point I kind of realized that okay well last is no one trick pony so I <laughs> so I realized that okay maybe I'm just gonna write write lyrics for the part and I realized that okay this is this could work with like aggressive vocals then I went on thinking that like we could maybe like uh, get someone to do do like uh, screamo vocals on top of that and then I, we decided just to demo that with Lassie and we kind of came up with that uh, like I don't know who had that idea you or me but like it was that, that like really aggressive rapping, which could at least demo the part for someone else. And if it worked, it would be great. And it worked absolutely in absolutely massively amazing way. Like seriously, I think that's and like happened yeah. when we were doing the demo vocals. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's that's how how it was, yeah. Uh, in the studio, it was the same. Like I think I said to you and Matthias that I'm not sure if I'm like uh, if I can do this. Like, and I, I think it took just one hour to do those like verses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was like really natural. And, and, and even Matthias, who doesn't uh, usually approve those kind of things, he was like, he was like, this doesn't sound like anyhow, like pretentious or something like that. Someone is not trying to rap here. This is like serious vocals. It sounds like really good. And, uh, we all agreed. It was like really awesome because I've heard awful rapping on metal music. 
I'm not gonna name any examples, but like really like lame kind of, and that was not lame. It was like really awesome, and that's 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 kind of the point when I realized that Arian can do pretty much what they want, like seriously, because because there are no limitations basically in what we do. It's it's really easy when when it comes to like super versatile vocalist, like extremely skilled musicians, and like uh, and open mindedness on top of that will like will be a big asset so that's how the, that song came together and that's that's why also we felt like super confident going into recording this album because because we felt like we could do anything we want that's pretty much <laughs> yeah that song actually i was gonna ask you lassie um because for me it felt like the most maybe experimental song vocal wise how how was it for you to do this kind of style of singing well actually uh like i said it, it was like super easy somehow uh and uh when i s started to sing uh, i uh first i noticed that i can do the high notes like 10 years ago or something like that then i think it was like symphony x or like probably russell allen's uh something and i like wanted to try if i could do that because it sounded pretty cool like uh this uh rasp kind of singing then uh i mean just like trying that kind of vocals but not we have uh, i haven't recorded anything like that before maybe on cover shows or something like that like chris corner is probably closest to my like rapping kind of singing so yeah i don't know it just happened when we were our rehearsing space and uh i just noticed that i can do this and yeah i think it was like natural somehow it yeah. sounds i think it sounds pretty funny because the vocals are like really rough but uh i still can do the same so <laughs> i don't know yeah pretty much we, we just tried and it worked that's, that's kind of and that's that that's the like big 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 asset of last like uh, that he has it's that it's that uh he can really throw himself into doing something that's different and 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 like uh, doesn't get upset if it doesn't work. We, then we just abandoned the idea. But that one worked, and it was like brilliant. We and came also, up with the new stuff. Yeah, and also I've been listening to rap music. I'm I'm not listening just like metal music or just rock music. So uh, of course, when driving my car or something like that, I've been like doing some rap things. So like I think somehow you have learned that. Even no, even not noticing that you like trying to learn rapping or something like that. Well, I, even I had to guess because of that, and you could maybe do that kind of vocal style. <laughs> that's the funny part. Now, another song that stood out to me is the instrumental track. Um, is that something you always wanted to do as a guitarist? You know, because it's so elaborate for your guitar. This is actually funny, funny because that is the only song uh, on this album I haven't written. It's actually this. It's a track that's written by Tobias, but uh, it was first meant to be like Tobias wrote this like mellow guitar part at the very start of the song, and we thought it could be an intro. But then, then we kind of felt like. It was actually, I believe it's, it was out of my suggestion that Tobias could continue on doing that and we could make it into an instrumental, full instrumental song. And uh, then I even, and I went on to suggest that maybe I could solo a little bit on the song. And then uh, the song came together, it sounded pretty good, and but there was no like, uh, I, I felt like, at that point, I felt like the song is cool, but it lacked, it lacked that kind of like, uh, you know that kind of uh, something that you will follow throughout the song. So uh, uh, when we were in the studio and it was pretty much recorded, I started to work on the guitar solo for the first time. And uh, then I realized that maybe I would start from here and go all the way to the end of the song. And that was like kind of kind of like that changed the song in my opinion a lot. So uh, and and that's how it kind of came together and i realized that okay i can i can pretty much like uh, go like really show off here and like show everything i've got like from the, like really mellow parts into like like 
complete like insane like uh, fast shredding you know and I felt li- really awesome because of that because uh, it was really fun to experiment with like my guitar playing like on what I can do and I'm really happy that something like that has been recorded because now I have a kind of a uh, singers get that a lot because they, they get to be soloists on songs like all the time but but basically for a guitar player that rarely happens if you don't do an instrumental album but for me it happened on an Arian album and that is why I feel like really complete as a guitar player because of that song because it was done I, I had the chance to experiment my skills like uh, uh, from from here to here so it was like so it was like really awesome awesome to do that and I feel really happy for like uh, because Tobias wrote the song and 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 left me a chance to solo on it and uh, even though I didn't write the song a, a lot at all I felt like I had a big influence on it because I was the soloist and now I kind of understand how singers feel about their work <laughs> so it's kind of kind of kind of really like fulfilling you know now Nolly of Periphery also mixed your album how was it to work with him and how did you end up collaborating with him well, it was actually my silly suggestion, like before we, before, when I was still like uh, writing the last pieces of lyrics, uh, the album was coming together, and and we realized that it's gonna be a heavy album, and we want to like uh, like uh, put an emphasis on that, and and uh, I had this crazy idea of like 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 hiring Matthias again for production because he's the best, he's he's a total MVP if you, if you may when it comes to music production and uh well i had this crazy idea which which i said to tobias on phone i was like i was like we will try nolly like seriously seriously and and tobias was like that would be so insane but it will never happen and and i was like i was like it will it will fucking happen we will make it happen and and then i i mailed to rico from uh, no, I didn't mail a message to Riku from Ranka, and uh, Riku was like, uh, "Yeah, all is not gonna happen. We can't, we can't get a contact." And then Matthias, I talked to Matthias, and Matthias was like, "I have a contact." So I was like, "Okay, great. So let's try it." And and then we decided for a cap on the price, which we will uh, we will uh, go for if 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 it comes to that. And uh, uh, the um, Matthias contacted Nolly and. Nolly said yes and mentioned his price and it was actually way under what we had ex- estimated it to, for, for it to be and we decided we're gonna go for Nolly and and we felt like super excited because we, we would have Matthias solely focusing on like production and and like uh, working his ass off on, on, on like our tracks until they will be presented to Nolly which uh, who, will, who will come with something uh, who come, uh, come up with something that's like really different from our previous work and it actually worked <laughs> so pretty happy it was like it was kind of a silly dream you know if you may you know and it came true because we just went for it sometimes you just have to go for things even though they feel like they're out of your reach yeah is there anything you learned from working with him yeah well <sighs> can't can't say that actually it's kind of it's kind of a uh, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe because of utilizing Nolly, we kind of learned that from Matthias that uh, when when you use an external uh, mixing engineer who is not your producer, you have to prepare the tracks perfectly because you can't leave anything for guessing. That's that's may, maybe the the biggest like uh, thing that you uh, we, we kind of learned from when it comes to that uh, and that turned out to be like really uh, really like wise advice from Matthias because because uh, that was actually uh, kind of kind of an obstacle when it came to that kind of um, work Nolly did because because uh, he had this huge amount of tracks which we always have on our albums like you know and and it was like really really difficult for him for starters when when he when it came to working that he he was thanking us a lot on like uh, pre, uh the track preparing because we did it so well Matthias did an awesome work on that but but he has this huge amount of stuff and uh it actually took a long time because of that uh it was like uh um, 
that's that, that's kind of what we learned it's like really important to like be like really precise on your production and like uh uh, doing this preparing work as good as you can because it's gonna be difficult even for a mixing engineer who uh, of knowledge level like seriously it's uh, there's no one in the world who, who can mix an Aryan album in two weeks because of the heavy amount of tracks you know <laughs> that's what we kind of learned what would you say are the main differences between your previous album and this album sounds like last year you can actually start well, yeah uh... I would say this album is like, of course, I think everyone has noticing, noticed that it's more heavier and like uh, more modern. And uh, I would say there's one thing that I like the most probably is the guitars. I've always like loved that there's like big guitar sound on tracks and uh, about the guitar sound, actually, I think Matthias and Eve are doing that together. That's like, uh, how do I say it? Like Jeremy Yager and uh, Mario Lemieux playing in Pittsburgh Penguins, like there's a dream team doing that together. So uh, yeah, that's one thing I, I can hear from there. Uh, yeah, and probably we're trying like new things. Like I would say, uh, uh, for example, I love to be your enemy. Like that's something we could have done, that we could have not done previously. On life is not beautiful. I don't know. I think we're we're not ready for something like that because it was so different. And now we are like, uh, how do you say it? We're we were of course we were younger then, and uh, what is the word? We are like more if i say more mature i don't know it's the right one but like doing something like that like trying new, new things that could work or could not work so maybe you can continue from here <laughs> yeah yeah well i kind of get that point because i think you mean that we were kind of kind of more like confident in in trying in yeah, trying was new work. things yeah exactly yeah like uh because uh now we kind of have this uh, like experience, which gives that confidence to like really go for those like uh, like like uh, experimental diamonds, if you may. Like like it's kind of kind of kind of kind of funny to compare those album albums because I, the way I see it, uh, life isn't beautiful is that it's like a transitional album towards this style we are now going for. Uh, I believe. Uh, I kind of had this kind of goal in my mind when going into uh, this direction, well, even when like working on life isn't beautiful. Uh, but uh, it, it was not the right moment to like go fully into this, and 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 uh, I think it it was like really really like deep in my kind of subconsciousness, like. Uh, like 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 it, it it was there but it was not like super present and that's what why the songs on life is not beautiful are are not like as uh modern and as heavy as on this album and uh also like uh, one of the main differences on this album is that uh for example on uh, like life is not beautiful is like heavily focused on vocals it's like uh it's uh, they're not like super exciting like instrumental parts which is actually quite disappointing knowing what what a band like ours can do like um, and and like uh, it's almost like like if lost society did, a, did an album without any riffs <laughs> like it would be like really really like weird even though even though Sammy is an awesome vocalist but but, but the whole point of the band is that they're amazing ba players and it's kind of the same same with us and uh, on this uh, on this album all of that instrumental madness is kind of showcased. It's like it's really present, but it uh, but this album does not put any less emphasis on the like really good vocal melodies, really good vocal performances, lyrics and shit like that. They, they each of the songs will work uh, will work with like just piano and lossy singing. It will be like really good, except for the instrumental song maybe. But <laughs> but yeah, like. Like uh, it, it's uh, it still has that like really honed like band arrangement thing going on all the time and and I think I think that's the 
key difference, and that's the key difference why I am why I am so so happy for this for this album because it showcases our whole band as as good as it can be, and that's kind of, and we can only go like like I feel like we're going gonna go even more into this direction, like we're gonna like uh, keep that instrumental madness going. He- heavy amounts of solos and still keep that melodic thing going, which really showcases the vocals as well. So that's pretty much my opinion on the album. Perhaps a more difficult question, but if you had to each pick one track on this album that's your favorite, which one and why? Yeah, last please go first. <laughs> yeah, and I start. Okay, I will. I, I have to take uh, Bloodline. I mean, uh, well, the song is like, uh, you know huge sounding melodic masterpiece like this. Uh, I think this is the trademark for Arion. And uh, of course I have to point out that Nora is on a track. Like uh, he's like the mentor for me as a singer. So that was like a huge thing that I got to do a duet with him, with her, sorry. And uh, I would point out the lyrics as well. There's like this timeless topic that Eva has written, uh, like, you know, we're still not learning from our mistakes. And every time I hear the song or I'm seeing the song, uh, it's a good reminder that uh, we're not learning from anything. And that's like, I don't know why, like, we're still, when you're reading the news, you, you, you just have to read all the bad things every day, every week, every year, generation to generation. That's really stupid so bloodline is my choice yeah well <laughs> i actually hate it now because it, I, I i like <laughs> gave you the opportunity to go first because because i was gonna pick bloodline as well and for the same reasons because of uh, of the lyrics and 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 uh composition wise it's like really strong in my opinion even even though some people may not find it as like like super catchy many do i find it like just super like uh confident and like stable composition wise and that's why it's my favorite song from this album and kind of because also because it's an Aryan trademark but I will have to go for something else now and uh, if I have to choose I'm gonna go for In the Name of Love because it's like uh, it's also like uh, just like uh, I was like really 50-50 on like choosing In the Name of Love or I Love to Be Your Enemy but I'm gonna go for In the Name of Love because uh, it's um, on our terms, it's like uh, it's like uh, quite experimental, and and it's like uh, it's it's kind of like re- really cool because it, it's like uh, uh, it's lyrics and also also because I I wrote it in like an insane uh, like like inspirational flow in just two days like as the last song for this album, and I realized that this might be one of the best songs on this album, and for really good while I, uh, it was my number one on this album but after it was recorded bloodline was my was my was my absolute fa- favorite after all but so in the name of love because because i i really really like the lyrics are super personal and and also like uh and also like it's uh, it's it's just a very different kind of song that feels experimental even though it's kind of mainstream if you may so so it's it's kind of Kind of like really exciting for me as well. Those two songs and I Love To Be Your Enemy are my top three from this album. Well, so obviously we already talked that you're not certain about any live shows right now, but I was wondering if you're planning to do, if there are no shows coming up in 2021 at all, if you're interested in doing a live stream concert of some sorts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we have been talking about this, but uh, well, my opinion is that um, we should not do those at all, I think, because uh, I don't know, it's not working. I, I've seen those, I've seen bands doing those, and there's always some technical problems, and it's not sounding that good. So, I don't know, I think we should just wait for the real live shows. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree on that. And my main reason is that I believe the kind of momentum for doing that is gone already. No one no one cares, cares a shit about a fucking stream concert anymore. Like, seriously. Because uh, they, they, they were a cool thing back, back in the spring, maybe. Yeah. But like, but like, uh, seriously, it's like, I think they're gone already, and and uh, and uh, I I kind of kind of kind of don't don't feel like it's just gonna be a cool thing anymore. And even though we could easily pull that off with our like uh, uh, assets and and with help of our friends and shit like that, please no. We we just wanna play for a real audience. Okay, well, <laughs> let's hope that maybe in summer you get to have some shows at least. But anyhow, I think our time is up. Do you have any last thoughts you want to share to people who are watching this? Well, um, just listen to it, please. <laughs> and, and uh, well, uh, nothing but positive thoughts to everyone. I know this uh, corona shit is like uh, treating everyone like really horribly. <laughs> some others like really bad and some others like even worse but <laughs> but yeah like what can i say like thank you for listening to us thank you for listening to this interview and thank you for this interview Laureline. this was like really pleasant and nothing else take care stay healthy and we could go to the commercials because when I was making the coffee, I thought you guys would be here, so I got these two nice <laughs> cups over here. <laughs> then, of course, you should go to Backstage Rock Shop. You can get these awesome merchandise from there. We got vinyls, too. There we go. <laughs> Even though, yeah.